George, I want to start the conversation uh, with you. Uh, here in Washington, D.C., you're at the front lines of infrastructure, water infrastructure, and you know uh, better than anyone the challenges that we see not only here in Washington with the water infrastructure, but across the country. Can you talk to us a little bit about those challenges? Sure. Uh, I remember one of the calls I got on the bat phone. The bat phone is the phone that the mayor calls you on and the council members call you on, and you have it on you 24 hours a day. <clears throat> this call came through late on a Sunday night of Labor Day weekend two years ago. And I lived at the time down by the ballpark, which is south of the Capitol, and I had a floor-to-ceiling window that looked north to the city. And the call was is that there was severe flooding in a particular neighborhood of Washington, D.C. No rainfall was falling at all in <laughs> my neighborhood just to the south. But I could see the incredibly dark clouds and it looked like an edge to them that was just to the north. I ran out, hopped into my car, which is a Volt, by the way, I was a little okay. nervous about driving into a flood in an electric car. <laughs> I, I dropped into my Volt, I drove uptown, and I was, I was there pretty quickly because it was just cross town and no one else was driving at this point. Um, and we had, uh, what had happened is so much rainfall had happened in such a short duration that we have combined sewers in Washington, like 750 cities in uh, the United States, and the combined sewage line, which is actually huge, it starts at seven feet in diameter and ends at 22 feet in diameter when it gets down to the Anacostia River. So much storm water had flown into it, that flowed into it, that it, it filled. If you're near the river, that allows an overflow to the river, which is a terrible outcome, but better than the alternative, which is it flowing back into homes mm -hmm. and streets. But in the center of the city, the only overflows, they, they do in fact overflow to the streets and the, and the and the houses, and that's exactly what had happened. The, the sewer lines become like water mains when they're filled to that level. They become pressurized, and they start pushing this combination of sewage and wastewater back into the system. And we had sewage going into basements throughout this neighborhood. We had so much flow on Rhode Island Avenue, which is not that far north in the city, that a car was floating down the street, and then they, our part, their driver had to be rescued. Well, we started looking into what is the problem in this neighborhood. There is a one main sewer line. It's called the Northeast Boundary Trunk Sewer that runs all the way across Florida Avenue. For those who are not in Washington, D.C., if you think of the city as the famous diamond, it's not that far up the city where, where, where Florida cuts across. Mm -hmm. That's called the Northeast Boundary Trunk <coughs> Sewer because when it was installed in 1890, Florida Avenue was the northeast boundary of Washington, D.C. Prior to there being any cars, any mode of the transportation other than horses, no one lived north of that because it would take too long to get down <coughs> into the center of the city. So the main sewer line, the largest sewer shed in Washington, D.C., is served by a sewer that was installed 120 years ago. That's the challenge that cities all over the country face. We have infrastructure that was installed. We, I've got uh, water mains above uh, White House that were put in before the Civil War. Our average age of our unlined cast iron water mains, which are our biggest <coughs> trouble because they corrode and we have all sorts of brown water issues. The med I'm not sorry, not median. Median age of our unlined cast iron water mains, 750 miles of them in Washington, D.C., is 96 years old. And <coughs> I'm not a math person, but median to me, they tell me, means that half of the pipes in the city are older than that and half are younger than 96 years old. It's an unbelievable characteristic that this essential service has that kind of age. Now, just to give you a sense of the challenge of replacing and getting up to date, according to US EPA, the average replacement of capital infrastructure by most authorities is about a half a percent a year. One half of 1% of your capital infrastructure. That's a 200-year replacement cycle. In DC, when I started as GM five years ago, it was one third of 1% a year. That's a 300-year replacement cycle. That's a 300-year replacement cycle built on the back of 100-year-old median age infrastructure. That's a 400-year. It's just, it's untenable at its core. What I've been able to do over the last five years is triple our capital replacement in Washington, D.C. We're now at 1% of replacement. But the challenge to all of us is the price and the cost. When I arrived at, at, at D.C. Water, the average single family cost per month was about $40 a month. I have tonight a rate hearing, the final of nine that I do all myself. I have two police officers accompany me because some of these are pretty tough. We are making a proposal that if accepted will be an $88 per month average single family bill. That's more than doubled in five years. We projected out 20 years of what it's gonna take us in order to get the infrastructure in the capital city to 
to where it ought to be, and we have above inflation increases projected 20 years in advance. So the challenge of this extraordinarily important infrastructure, aged to an extent that's almost mind-boggling, and the financial needs in order to update and improve it, is one that's really an incredible feature of, of modern society.